Ah, well, I would call it trifogog or trifogog. I'm not a Manx speaker. <laughs> However, we're in the old baths. It's what it's always known as, the old, the old baths at, just outside Peel. Nice open air place, which I'm, I think it probably closed around about 1960. I'm not sure. I, as a boy, used to come here in the 1950s. It's an amazing sight because I think it, because it's so deep, I mean, even now it's only half past 10 in the morning, but the sun is in, the whole site is in sunshine, um, which will stay like that really for the rest of the day, which is a remarkably good sight for an outdoor pool. It was a great visitor attraction and a terrific facility for sort of visitors when, you know, we had a very busy uh, tourist industry. Um, so there used to be swimming galas here. I think probably about once a month there'd be a swimming gala. The thing I always enjoyed when I was sitting high up there watching uh, was the greasy pole competition, which used to happen over in that corner as well, um, with people challenged to walk the greasy pole. And I never heard of anyone getting, you know, serious injury. Lots of bruises and grazes and people sliding, you know, one leg either side of the pool and um, that must have been painful. I don't know how the pole was fastened, but it would be a pole of, you know, uh, telegraph pole dimensions and considerable length and the object was to walk along it barefoot uh, to the end of the pole turn round and walk back again. One or two people did it, usually those who were later in the competition when some of the grease had worn off, I think. It was, you know, it was great fun. And there were all sorts of other fancy dress type swimming and stuff going on. So it was very much a, it was a family pool for people just enjoying their holidays, really. So this is the, this is the diving board area which of course was a great feature of these swimming galas because it's a more spectacular thing for people to watch than, than people just swinging the crawl or the breaststroke or something. But um, it wasn't particularly high. I think there's a nine foot depth of water and I, I suppose it's what would it be, 15 feet high, something like that. Um, a rather hazardous route to it. I, I was never a diver wonderful bank there and then there above the path you had tremendous views i think even now though nowadays um, if the place were active you certainly wouldn't be allowed to sit there i used to come and sit with my mother and my sister and we were quite unconcerned about the possibilities of sliding in <laughs> well we're looking at where the changing rooms used to be and as you can see over there, uh, there's a rem remnants of a platform, but that platform used to extend out to ooh, about here, I think, uh, at, at this sort of height, roughly our head height, uh, which carried the changing rooms. And behind there was a, a building, uh, almost like a little cottage. Whether or not it was a cottage once, I don't know, but it's like a little cottage which it sort of it used to have pop and crisps and that type of thing. We used to have a lot of fun just playing underneath. So I'm standing now on an area that did at one time house the little ticket office where you paid your threepence to, to get into the place. And then having done that, you were able to walk through to the Changing, changing facilities. Um, you didn't have to jump off the end of there. The platform that we talked about, have talked about, extended right out to here and right across. When you look at it, you wonder how in 1892, how they ever built it. I mean, without all the wonderful modern aids, you know, all to get all this cement in here and, you know, to build those astonishing retaining walls on the path coming down, uh, which still stand and are in perfect condition. And then I can't remember how many steps there are up, 
that all those steps to be built. Um, no, I think, um, I, I think it's, yeah, pretty good. 